Hey love bugs, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs, my grown extended beautiful family, as always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste. Love and blessings, love and light, and many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have... Uh, been watching my videos for a while and have not already please drop a line i would love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me and if you feel like the video just gives good vibes and you know um you would really love to share that would be greatly appreciated please go ahead and do you know i said go ahead and do yeah yeah appreciate it go ahead and do <laughs> so with that being said you know i hope you're able to resonate with the content of the video y'all my dad gone my meditation music acting up so i'm like uh you know what go ahead and do it freestyle you ain't gotta always have music i've been so used to doing it for so long um but anyways um the video that i'm doing today is called twin flame 101 hey okas um nightmare relationship uh with narc uh narc versus empath Ugh. you know like i said in the last video or i've said before I, even i posted um empaths are the worst nightmare to uh to narcs narcissistic people because it's just fact is we any anybody that is uh strongly connected to their empathy you know everybody carries it you know a lot of people just choose not to use it and some people you you have no choice you were destined to use it um we mirror out a lot of things that the narcs you know it could be a covert situation whatever you you uh really mirror out a, a lot of things that they choose to want to keep you know keep you know in the dark and it, these are the situations it all depends on how you see the perspective of this experience you know and a lot of times it's like you know Rosalind how can you see a good thing out of it you know there's some people that got hands laid on them every day just because it's like why did they do that it's Friday why are they mad it's Tuesday it doesn't matter this is how they empower themselves this is how they fuel that you, you're their supply you know, you're the punching bag, you're the doormat, you know, so these things are, they're supplying that throughout the relationship uh, to be able to empower them, you know, that you are their source on how they feel, uh, you know, invincible, you know, the uh, authority, you know, authority uh, complex, you know, authority, you know, inferiority complex as well, you know, all these different things occur. Um, and relationships and, and narcs come in many forms, you, you know, and it's just scary, you know, so you, there's always like, what do you look for? Because they're in so many different forms, but you have to understand these people have no empathy. They don't, you know, they don't want to be accountable for their actions. They'll see everybody as an issue except them. You know, there, you know, there are so many different things that they carry um, in that that is very, it, it can be very dangerous, but it's also dangerous for us as well. You know, you're going through these different things into your life where you're experiencing it. But um, like with my situation, I've been through it where it was very physical. You know, it's been dangerous in every form. You know, uh, anytime that your life is being in a situation like this, it can, get, if it can go very rock bottom. It can go very bad. Uh, but it's just the fact is with the, the situation where I can stay out of mind. You know, um, I, I can't be you know held accountable and saying everybody's you know if you can see it as a blessing with everything that you go through it's up to you to be able to see that you know what you're going through you know what you're facing and you know what you're having uh an issue with probably identifying with uh coming to terms accepting being honest with you about yourself you know um a lot of times you know going through these situations they'll make you seem like everything is your fault on everything that you have gone through it's my fault they act like this it's their fault where they have outbursts this is their uh it's your fault because of their uh Jekyll and Hyde uh behavior that they carry but you have to understand these are the things where I can say I've seen as a blessing in disguise it took me a long time for me to be able to see it is that because I've gone through so 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 much but it's also brought me through so 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 much and it allowed me to see so many beautiful things that um i really was rerouted to finding i had to go through that discovery with myself because of the trauma that i faced you know if i wanted things to get better i had to go about things differently i had to be able to see them differently i had to understand where was that antidote to what i you know that virus of what i've gone through you know and i had to really go through that 
And these are the things that um, I really had to go through that reality of really facing, you know. Um, this it being in a narcissistic experience is very, very traumatic in every way, sense, form, or fashion, any kind of way that you've gone through it. But any person that has been able to walk away from it, you know, part ways with it permanently, you know, um, it can take you through so many different things, you know. But I always tell people, if you have walked away from this, you just don't know where it's going to take you to. You know, it's hard to be able to do that, especially when you have children um, in this situation. It's very hard because they have normalized that. Now you're going to have to reset everything all over again. You know, showing them this is not how you're supposed to be treated. This is not acceptable. You know, I don't want you attracting what you see me exposed to, what you've been exposed to. Um... I want you to be able to have healthier relationships, not just with other people, but with yourself. You know, these are the nightmares that you're really, you know, you're really having to deal with. Um, going through this, you know, it really showed me uh, where my love felt non-existent with myself because I felt like this is what I deserved. You know, this is what I constantly get through. So obviously, you know, that's what I deserve. You know, um... I didn't, I was not, um, I wasn't deserving of love. You know, I, I can't demand respect. I never really received it. You know, um, all these different things. And then it got to that point where I said, it's enough is enough. I want to one day get married. I want to one day be in a vibration where um, my partner, my life partner, I, I will have a life partner that wants to see me happy. That doesn't take pleasure out of seeing me hurt. Doesn't mock me, you know, if, if I'm going through uh, depression or sadness or anything like that. Encourages me. That believes in me. You know, that wants to see nothing but good coming out of me. To know that whatever I'm facing is not alone. You know, not giving excuses on um, not being not being able to have that communication where we can talk about what our issues are you know not in um a toxic dramatic way you know not yelling screaming you know calling each other vulgar names you know placing hands on each other you know have it to the point where you know authorities being called you know somebody go to jail somebody leaving in a body bag somebody gotta go to church you know not gotta gotta go to church or even go to the hospital you should be able to go to church at any time but but you know uh just going through that you know, um, it was a nightmare for me that I, I have finally been able to, you know, see the monster in my closet, being able to face that monster and just being able to say, you know, it, you help me find the truth out of, out of everything that I, I normalized that was illusion. You know, um, being able to stand up on my own, even if I had to stand up on myself. Uh, being able to face my power through my times of weakness, being able to see my light even through my moments of darkness, um, being able to know I had the strength to carry on and uh, and stand strong, even though how many times that I've I've lost hope, um, and how many times I fail, you know, um, the nightmare it, it'll keep going as long as you're allowing yourself to keep dreaming in that, you know. A lot of times we've, you know, it's like Rosalind. I I don't. I can't walk away you know I don't have what it takes and it's like yes you do you have to force yourself to you know you're allowing people to say that I'm, it's okay to treat me like this it's okay to go through this you know and it's not saying you know you don't deserve happiness because I feel everybody deserves happiness you know you want to be in um a love, a love not just with a partner but even with, within yourself to where it's so beautiful you want everybody to experience that like this is the kind of love I want you to have you know to where it feels like you're constantly walking on clouds you see you love what you see about yourself in every way you see what you've gone through and it helped you get to the point you are at now you know um, and that's where the happy endings came in for me you know, not being in that relationship, but being in that relationship with myself to where even though I'm not exactly out the woods of that, but just being able to say, hey, I'm claiming that. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm still in this. I'm still in. I'm not I'm not breathing that is in my existence. But just being to say I'm woke. 
out of that nightmare. But I appreciate what that nightmare taught me. I'm my superhero. I saved myself. Nobody could do that but me. You know, a lot of times we try to find the easy way out where we're looking for somebody to save us. They're looking for somebody to take us out of that. And there's sometimes, there's a lot of times where you will get that help. You know, and if it is somebody offer that help, take it, snatch it up. You know, you may be in a situation because there's a lot of times where I've known people that had to be in um, uh, basically survival homes, you know, rehab to where, you know, their, their, their whole family has been rerouted and they're putting them in a safe place, a safe haven, you know, for victims that has gone through that. And you may not like the rules that you're going through. You may not like that experience, but it was far more better than what you were facing then. And that's where that's where the journey begins. Is when you identify the problem where the, there's some kind of way where this has to end. You know, and I'm praying to God it doesn't end with my life or me taking somebody's. Because it's like a lot of times when situations like that comes out, it can push somebody into that vibration to where they end up. And in the life of the person that has placed that on them, where they've had, you know, enough is enough. You know, I, I, I can't keep taking this. I've seen it, you know, you hear it on news every day, you know, where the, a person has been abused for so long. I know um, one that I heard about uh, that somebody made it into a horror short. Of uh, not, it was not. A, it was a narcissistic experience, but not. They weren't in a relationship with them, but that's how bad it was. Where um, I forgot what the girl's name is. She was a very beautiful girl. Um, emphasize on was. Um, she went. She was working at Hooters. Um, in a situation where you know, I'm not saying that every Hooters is like that because I noticed that you know, with me being, I love having uh watching the the horror shorts you know like uh what horror short party um was the imr uh what was the other one i like broccoli uh what was the other one ssg all those different ones i love it i noticed that people be on that like uh what is it among us and you know warcraft or deep web you know it'll be the ones like you know now it's like the hooters or uh, Popeyes and stuff like that they're making this and it's just like well horror shorts I love him just like everybody I love that they have um there's a special way that they they done their 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 um their uh their content but um with horror shorts he uses a lot of different ones that were uh true experiences and he puts it on you know uh as in an animation um and his was where this girl was really you know um going through it with a customer and it was just like she went to the bar she went through the chain and they were like well you know we don't want to kick him out because it's just like this is where our, our money is our bread and butter and it's just like to me and my you know my situation of me seeing that so basically you know you have people that are working here and their life have to be put in danger because people don't know where you know this is you know this is an establishment and it makes it feel like, oh, since you don't put so much money out and these people, you're paying that person to do that. You know, they're talking to you, whatever. I don't know. I've never been employed at Hooters. I've ate there before. But, you know, um, and basically I used to work in an adult club, you know, where I used to be an exotic dancer for a long time. And that's what it basically felt like to me. You know, except the fact that you're not taking clothes off. You're wearing these little booty shorts and these little tight shirts and stuff like that. But there's people that, you know, know this is your job. This is your entertainment. You're you're creating a fantasy for them. But this man took it too far. Felt like, oh, I put so much money in this girl's pocket. I own her. You know, this girl had a whole life outside of that dating and stuff like that. The man came to the point where... You know, um, she was telling her boyfriend, oh, I gave him, I didn't give him my number, but I gave him my email. And she was looking at, what are you doing? Because he was like, oh, I want to know your schedule. He's like, why? Don't, don't, I'm like looking at it like, no, that's where the issue started at. And I'm not saying that was worth for the outcome that happened, you know, because everybody got a choice on how they choose to deal with things. And he chose to, you know, he chose that route the way he chose it. But um, it was... Uh, you know, she had sit up here and, and, and went through a situation like that. And it's like, well, you know, he pays very good, you know, and all I got to do is just talk to him. He buys beers, wings and, you know, this, that and a third or whatever. So, I don't, you know, I really don't see a problem. The boyfriend's like, you know, I see an issue out of that. You you know, that's being too personal. You can't do that. And um, 
there's uh where it became very bad where the man was starting to get handsy and you know going through all that and she seen that she went towards you know the boss and the change of the man and they didn't say nothing to this man so it got to that point where you know what, i'm gonna quit because my life is not this is not worth my life me losing my life because you don't want to tell them no because it's going to make customer service look like oh you you have the part you have the obligation to have to accept that because these people are paying money no there has to be a line to be you know you shouldn't be drawn you know um and so when she did that she went to be a school teacher and next thing you know this man started haunting her following she don't know how he found out where they were i think they were living in some part of florida or virginia i can't remember where she was um but where she when she moved she finally got her job there and um, at the school, he ended up finding out where she was in school. And it was when she was dating her boyfriend. And then, you know, they finally got married and said, you know what? This guy's following us all over the place. You know, um, I went to uh, to court. You know, I went to, you know, the police department. It's like, oh, well, we can't do anything. You know, you're showing us all, all this. And he really hasn't done nothing. I'm looking at this is like a WTF moment. I'm like, you know, protect and serve what? That's why I really want to know what I'm out, what, what are you protecting and serving? Because this situation should have had that man locked up, you know, for what he was doing to her. You know, because it, it's just the fact that she had too many things, you know, emails, you know, the uh, things that he was leaving at her, her house. You know, all these evidence where it showed this man should have been very highly reprimanded. Should have been locked up for what he did, but he wasn't. So she said, since they're not going to do anything, we're going to do something. We moved to a whole new different state in some kind of way. Sooner or later, after they were living their life and, you know, um, it, it had her point where, you know, she was a nervous wreck that her and her husband ended up working at a call center, you know, um, and they worked the same shifts and stuff like that or whatever. But it just so happened that one day she went to work. Um, no, before that. No, no, before that. All of a sudden, they, it was like months after they don't move next. You know, this idiot done sit up here and found out exactly where she stayed. And she's trying to understand how did he find out. You know, he leaving, you know, notes. She looking at, you know, she going outside, you know, watering her flowers. And next, you know, he over here, you know, waving at her. And he's like, I'm in a whole new different state on the opposite side of the world. And you found me, you know. So next thing you know, he was like, oh, I'm going to, you're going to be mine and all this stuff. You know, this really creeper stuff. And, um. She went to the authorities, you know, they were trying to do an emergency um, uh, 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 sign of protection. They end up letting this man know what he was doing. They still said you didn't have enough to get him locked up and we're not approving your, your order of protection. Um, and next thing you know, uh, I think... Either is like before that he went to jail, but he was released right after that. The fam they didn't even let the girl know he was released and all that. But the way, however it ended, the the um, judicial system did poor service to her, you know. Um, and really, uh, you know, it, it, I mean, when I when I say I was very upset, I was upset for her, her family, you know, everything like that. It was just that day. It was uh, unfolded into her demise where she went to work. And um, next thing you know, she get ready, entered, entered the building. And she called her husband and saying, he's here. He's here. Uh, and he's like, please help me. He's here. And you hear her screaming on the phone. He busted out the car. He went flying. You know, but he wasn't he wasn't fast enough. Next thing you know, you're hearing all these multiple shots. The man had it, it popped her a couple of times and he took his own. He took his own life. Um and you hear people he's just screaming you know the man you know is just hurt you know just heavy on my heart just even you know just picturing that while I'm even talking about it but um, going through all that where you know that that woman lost her life where something should have been done you know um, something should have been done you dealing with a narcissist like that you know that man was narcissist sociopath psychopath everything built into one you know, and this man was, it, what made it so bad, this girl was like in her early 20s. And this fool was in his 60s. And not to put a narrative on it, but that mess really pulled a punch right there. But um, going through all that, um, I feel like, 
you know, negative things like this happen. There's nothing that you can see a silver lining out of that because somebody lost their life. You know, it made them feel like, you know, um, I've been through experiences where you, you could have an order of protection and that's just paper. You know, it, it's just like, what's the point on it? You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, are scared of that because they don't want to go to jail, which is a smart thing to do. Um, but there are some people that feel like they're above the law. You know, and there's people that are like that. Like, if I can't have you, nobody else will. There's a lot of people that are like that in that vibration um, that are, they, they, they carry that, that characteristic of narcissistic people control, you know, uh, authorities, you know, that have control issues um, going on that. But uh, those type of situations is sad because that wasn't a relationship. That was an experience. But I think from what I, I'm not sure, but allegedly I think there was a foundation that that man had started because of that. And then that, that it was just like, because I try to be careful about how I say things because it's not like um when it comes to a situation like this because I, I never mean any disrespect to anybody because since behind senseless stuff like that just because it hit me so close to home um the silver lining is a lot of times when it comes to situations like that uh that was that purpose person's purpose for something like that to happen just to be able to protect the next person to be able to show you you know the judicial system really has to get their ex together I've always felt that way. I'm not going to say allegedly I felt that way just because of the things that I've gone through. You know, I used to get upset and, and there would be, you know, conversations that I would have with other people about how you can get busted with um, marijuana. And it could be for personal use and you will end up getting like years, 20, 30 years. And I mean, it's not nothing. It could just be that. And you get some years behind it. But let a person go to jail for you know, the touching little kids or, you know, not taking no for an answer and you only get two, three years or you get six months good behavior, you know. And there, and the scary thing is there's a lot of people out there that it, you, you don't notice like that, you know, and you only get that. So I said, basically, you're saying it's okay for you to violate somebody and take somebody's innocence away. But if somebody has... Something that just, you know, just to uplift them and make them happy. Now, that's a punishment. Now, I said, you want to say the world is just ass backwards. It truly is. But, you know, back to reroute to what I was talking about. You know, I don't know why I went towards that route. But it's just me speaking on me speaking. But going through, you know, nightmares like that, you know, um, it, it didn't end good for her. But it is just the fact is it's, it can open a door uh, to help save another person a lot of times that's the reason why things like that happen uh, when that you know you hear about a lot of stuff like that and you know I've, I've seen people that that you know the family end up being advocates to be able to help other people and I've heard them say you know if I can have my, my child back here I have my baby back here I can have such and such back here you know I would do it in a heartbeat but maybe this situation was for me to be able to advocate um, helping other people that are going through that or going through something a lot worse uh, in this situation. A lot of times that's, you know, we can't question God on why we, they allow certain things like this to happen. Why does the world have to be that way? But a lot of times somebody's life, a tragedy can become somebody else's blessing. That's what I'm saying. Um, we go through a lot of uh, nightmarish situations and a lot of times it don't end well you know um but i tell people don't ever feel like when you're in a narcissistic relationship your love is going to change them because a lot of times you feel like your love is good enough even though that love is not being uh reciprocated you know and it, it's just like a lot of times we don't realize being in a situation like that that's not love it would never be love you know it's going to help you find love for yourself to show you this is not what love is built off of. You know, love is going to be that that thing where it's not perfect. But love is going to be where you're not dealing with things. Whatever your hurt is, is that other person's hurt. You know, when they see you're slipping up, they're going to remind you, hey, you know, why are you slacking off on that? I've really seen you put your all in such and such and such and such. Why are you not doing that? Or, you know, if you need to talk, I'm here. 
you know, what's wrong or how was your day? You know, that's what love is. It's nurturing. It's not going to have you to where you're trying to do an X list or a checklist about what did you do for that person to do that. You don't have to. You can give them everything that they want, but it, it's like it's a, a, a thing with them, you know, um, with that. That's why they say uh, narcissist is our worst nightmare, but the empath, you even worse, you know, because you mirror out. There, there are things that they don't, they don't want people to know. They want everybody to feel like they're picture perfect, and they want people to believe that that's what that is, you know, um, that you were the one who created that monster in in that relationship. It, no, it was always there. It was always there, you know. Um, no matter what you do, you cater to every need that they have. They're still not going to do you right. You have to be able to have that 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 self discipline within yourself to say is enough is enough it's not but you know a lot of times if you actually have that support system to where somebody's going to help you get out of that situation like hey you know why don't you come move down here with me or why don't you come stay with me um because there's a lot of times where i've seen people get married in a situation like they're even dating I'm like hey you ain't got to work i want you to you know be a homemaker do this you know a man or a such and such person you know take care of home you know, you take care of home while I take care. I want to be the breadwinner and not realizing that's where that big no-no is because they want to control you. They want you to be limited, you know, limited to money. They want to be able to give you an allowance. I've seen people in a marriage where you work and you're on a allowance. Like, oh, well, I'm on, um, I got it. I'm only allowed to have $20 a week. That's how much you get in your check every week? No, that's, I got to give them my check and that's what they, excuse me. You know, I've heard people go through stuff like that because they know if you finally get that, they don't want you to have no kind of support system. You'll be at that situation where they will have you alienating everybody, your friends or family. They want you to have they want you to have no kind of support connection at all. At all, because they know if there's any kind of way you can see out of it and you get towards that desperation, they want to kill that every connection they have for you to be able to leave, you know. They'll tell you there's always something wrong, you know, with the people that you hang out with. Like, these are people that uh, that you've been best friends with for a long time. These are people that, you know, they're your family, you know, um, and all these different things uh, that you have gone through. Because they know if, if you get to that point where you start really seeing, really seeing the, the, you know, the, the green light out of that light look, it's going to be me or either me or you. You know, because when you get to that point, I've, I've been that, you know, like one more you, you octave and I'm going to catch a whole case with you. <laughs> you know, I'm going to catch a whole case with you because it's at that point, you know, I, I've seen that. I've even voiced that to people that I was close to. I said, I'm at that breaking point. If I end up losing my life, it's going to be because I'm trying to take somebody else's, you know. And in certain states, th the thing that pisses me off is that it doesn't become an issue until... That's what ends up happening. And then you're like, well, why don't you call the police for what? <laughs> you know, I've, I've been there. You know, I'm like, for what? What am I calling you for if you're not going to do anything? I almost got locked up because I went off on the cops. I don't cuss the cops out. I said, so, oh, so basically going to be a situation where somebody going to come out of a body bag. And you're going to be asking me, so why? You, you didn't have to come to that. You could have called the cops for what? You only protect and serve when you feel like it's a light switch with y'all. You know, some people you have that probably, uh, you know, I, I've seen people... Like, you know, where I used to live at, all before, where it was a good thing, you know, but that's when stupidity with me, I brought it back. You know, they'll tell you, hey, you got to go. You got a place you can be, you know, but where I in the South, no, go, go to a shelter, you know, and it, it could be everything that's in your name and they'll tell you to leave, you know. Or if they've been living there for, you know, 30 days, you can't put them out. That's just like when people, uh, what they call them people, uh... Oh, I forgot what they call when people move in with you and they have no squanders. I guess that's what you call them. Or when they come to stay with you, I forgot. I was watching The Worst Roommate on uh, Netflix and that mess was like, I was like, are you serious? Where people will move in with you and um, they'll give you like the money for that month, like the move in and all that stuff, like the deposit and all that. And next thing you know, after that, you don't get no more money. And then as soon as they sit up here, and start getting uh, mail at that place. 
they can live there rent free. They can tear up everything. They can do this and this and that. And you take them to court and then you're going to end up having to pay some more money. And that's where they know. That's where they loving it. Because the fact is they don't got away with doing you any kind of way. And don't have to move out until they go to court. And it could be a day where, oh, they, they all of a sudden when they know you about to go to court, all of a sudden they come, they leave. You know, and I've seen so many people's lives that, that has been destroyed for that. Especially when they were talking about, on um, what was it, World's, uh, Worst Nightmare or whatever, uh, Roommate. It was like about 10 or 20 people that was talking about that same person and how that person all ruined their whole life. But it's like situations like that to where I told them, I said, oh, I know I'm going to have to leave this state because, see, y'all, y'all going to make me come with the statistics real quick, like, <laughs> real quick, like, I, I almost came a deal, you know, real quick because they said, oh, you know, it ain't going to, I said, oh, so, so basically that you telling me they can be able to do whatever they want to me. And if it gets to that point where I snap. And I end up taking this person's license and catch charges, be smiling, holding that, oh, my number, you know, my, what's your name, uh, inmate, 412, you know, okay, the orange was the new black, blue, and everything else to me, you know, and it shouldn't have to get to that point, you know, where you're actually reaching out for help and help is not there, you know, and that's where the nightmare, it, it can be fueled out. But there is a blessing where you actually have people that see your situation and see that you're serious about getting out or they care about your life. Like, hey, this is dangerous. You know, um, you can lose your life over this. You can lose your kids over this. You know, your kids don't need to see you being hurt. Your kids don't need to see you getting hit or they, you know, they're doing it to your kids, too. You know, then a lot of times you make up excuses. Oh, it was a bad day. Oh, it's this, you know, and people came to me. You know, I'm going through this. My kids are all grown. You know, but if I know if I can smack the reality in people. When you have kids, your kids see that. This is what they feel like. This is what your relationship should be based on. This is how relationships are. This is how you're supposed to be treated. This is what you need to accept. And I say when you have kids that are watching that, even at a young age, get out. Get out right then. Because this could be your kids in 10, 15 years. This can be what their life is tending to be at. You know, they're either, they're, they're going to have that relationship with you. Like, they don't have to have respect for you. This is, they, they don't see people treat you like this all the time. You know, why do they need to respect you? Why, why are you teaching me how to do something? But yet, I've never seen you have that. You know, you've gone through stuff like that. I've had that issue with my kids as well. You know, my nightmare was it wasn't just the date. It was the family, too. I had no kind of support. You know, I had to deal with this on my own. I had no shelter to go to. I had no uh, friend I can go to. I was alienated from everybody. You know, even the family I had left because everybody else done passed away. Everybody who knew my situation done passed away that could help me out of this situation. And I felt lost. I felt defeated. You know, that was my worst nightmare because I've, I've gone through that. And it's just like, you know, I had no no family to run to, you know, because it's like with my situation, everybody that I knew that I considered that was family or is family done turned their back on me or they didn't want to believe it or I was made as the lie. As the villain. So they already had a bad taste of experience out of my life when they didn't even know the real truth. You know, so my purpose went a whole left way. You know, my stuff went straight left. And I had to be the one to save myself. The SOS become SYS. Save yourself. You know, mine came through that. And that was my nightmare. And I had to be that one that had the courage to wake up. Because you are, are, are supplying the my, nightmare in the closet. You know, it's just like Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger couldn't live um, and survive without your fear. That's what he fed off of. That's what became, you know, his nightmare. You are on the history. You know, and mine was reality street. I mean, you know, there's always an Elm, how they say it's always an Elm Street somewhere. You know, and with mine, I had to wake up. I had to be able to see the power in myself. I had to be able to say, you know... Uh, there's a reason why no matter how many times you try to end your life God said this is not going to be how you're going to end this this is not how this is going to be played you know well all this is being placed on my, my mind my soul, my spirit so 
you're protected. You mean, what do you mean so? It's protected. Everything that's going to be placed on you is going to use to empower you. What is meant to seek and destroy you is going to empower you. It's going to be able to better you in some kind of way. You have to be able to see it as that. It's all about how we see our situations. It's all about are we trying to find a way out or are we trying to run? Because if you run, it's always going to take you back. What you don't acknowledge is going to keep getting worse until you acknowledge. What you don't allow yourself to step out of, if universe does it, it's going to be a lot worse. Whatever you know that you're pushing out and good, good intentions are going to eventually come to you. It may not, it may take longer than others, that, but there's a reason behind that. There's a deeper purpose behind that. And these are the things that want you to be able to know, to be able to see your reality. You know, a lot of times it's hard when you're going through such a traumatic situation. It's hard for you to be able to see some kind of good that's going to come out of, of a, a bad situation like that. But knowing you have to have that courage to wake up. And a lot of times it gets really bad for you to understand that wake up call is waiting for you to wake up. So, you know, I'm hoping and praying this can help somebody uh, go through this. Like I said before, you know, when I'm talking about this, is it's not to bad mouth talk anybody that I've experienced with this. You know, it, it was a blessing to me. I'm truly grateful to everybody who's impacted me in the worst detrimental way because it, it showed me where my salvation was and my redemption is from the battle I was facing. You know, um, I've, I've had my moments where I didn't realize I seen myself as a victim. For me to be able to have content like this is be able to show me where my victim was, but where, 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 where my victim in and where my victor began. You know, I've conquered a lot of things and I conquered this and I'm still conquering it. You know, there's different things that, you know, the door is closed, but I had to allow myself to accept that door has closed. Regardless of what other people wanted to do, that I closed that door. But I had to allow myself to forgive, not just that person, but as well as myself. Allow myself to not... Uh, keep going down that, that path of allowing myself to remind me of what I went through. But allowing myself to see that is that chance that, you know, don't keep allowing yourself to open that door to keep really curling, ridiculing yourself on what somebody has done to you or what you didn't have the power to do then. You know, I didn't know then what I knew now. You know, I didn't have the courage then that I knew now. I had to be able to represent that, you know, represent that by rediscovering that. What I went through rerouted me. It took me through a whole reset for me to be able to find out where my power source was. And that power source was with me the whole time. I just had to be able to go through that to be able to find that. And just to know I can be an advocate to be able to share that experience, but in a positive way. You know, um, and like I said, to not pinpoint, you know, and, and, and expose people. But it is what it is. You know, this is my situation in a way I'm, I'm using this as a, a stepping stone to be able to help other people you know anything that you're moving through in a positive uh state of mind or in a positive way especially if you're in a situation like this you're always going to poke a bear because the fact is is spotlighting something that they want you to be docile about they don't want you uh talking about that because that exposes something that they don't want to let out you're living in your truth and you have to live in your truth the whole, whole you know through every way, through every avenue, through every frequency, every level. And um, I, I, I can't allow myself, you know, just because if you want to live in illusion, I'm allow you to do that. If you want to be self-destructive, I'm allow you to do that. But in that same way, I'm, I'm going to ask for mercy for you when it comes to universe and God. I'm going to ask for prayers of healing, you know, that eternal happiness that, you know, you venture out for. Um, but also allow myself to forgive. You know, whether or not it's apologetic from that person or not, I'm going to still forgive them. You know, because it, it just helped me find that beauty of, of a blessing within me through the things that I've gone through. It showed me the strength of where I have, where I can share my moments to be able to tell people. There's so many people. There's so many people out there like me. You know, there's so many people that have gone through situations like this that, you know, are trying to find how do I get out of this? How do I walk away? You know, I, I'm, I'm without, you know, hope, you know, because there's times I didn't feel hope in my life. There's times that uh, I felt defeat, 
many ways. It, it got to that point where the pain was so unbearable. I wanted it in my life so many times. You know, I tried. <laughs> and then I came back. You know, I was just pissed. But then it was just like, you know, even the way I've done it. You know, people are like, how did you survive that? You know, obviously there was a purpose behind that. Because of the things that I did to myself, there's no way I should be living. There's no way I could be doing it. And I'm not a vegetable. You know, um, but yet I'm still here, you know, uh, and being able to say, I mean, this, my situation has really made me stronger than I ever knew I could be. And I would never, even, you know, there'll be different times where, you, you know, you, I've said that as well as other people, if I could turn back time, I wouldn't do anything different. I wouldn't, you know, only thing it would be, is this the people that I've, you know, I've lost in transition. You know, but um, other than that, just to know that, I mean, our relationships are so much stronger. Love never dies. It just transitions. Um, uh, and, and just be able to appreciate that. And that's the only thing that I would uh, change if I could. But, you know, it, it played out the way that it did for that reason. But I hope you were able to resonate with the content of that video, y'all. It's just a blessing to be able to pass that that torch to somebody else, you know. Um, just being able to say your life doesn't have to end in that way. You know, if, if there are certain things that are still going on, the universe has a purpose for that. You know, a lot of times it, it can feel very cruel. It can feel like God is punishing you. But a lot of times you don't know that punishment turns transfer, transforms into your blessing. You just really never know that. So I hope you were able to resonate with that. You know, like I said, I always leave my contact information in the description box below. Um, this is very different for me. Y'all know I've been talking about it, but now it, it's just it's good to be able to talk about it. And then you can see the proof of what I'm talking about. Just the energy to project it towards that. Um, I'm not going to just be uh, doing these in videos. I'm going to do it in podcast form as well. You know, just to be able to help people um, in that way. Um, and so as well as I will be on my community page, I know today I put down, um, uh, different, uh, posts to be able to help people, you know, go through that, to be able to identify what, what you're dealing with. And it's not, um, I'm not going to be on that, that vibe of just staying on narcissists, uh, like that, unless universe, that's what universe wants me to do. That's what I'm guided to do. Then, um, it, to me, I, I don't want to just leave it there. I want to be able to do videos on uh, helpful healing, you know, uh, self-care, uh, boundaries, uh, healing from uh, abusive, you know, um, childhood trauma, uh, helping others, you know, different things like that. You know, anything that is, is, is teaching uh, insight uh, that can help help you see something good and bad. You know, um, being able to heal in some kind of way. So I want to be able to add that towards that. I guess it's just the fact is going on four years of doing. I think it's been close to four years. I can't remember. I know it's been a long time since uh, me doing um, Hey Oka videos. But I guess it's just like, you know what? You're going to still be on that. But now it's time to add something else to it. I'm like, okay, cool. It was scary, you know. But it's just like, you know, I can't hold fear in that of, of you know, um, dimming myself just making other people comfortable i'm not going to allow myself if i've done that before I'm, I'm anybody who got accustomed to me doing that you better uncustomize yourself because i'm not going to do that no more i'm not going to allow myself to be in fear because i know it's going to expose something that other people don't want to be talked about or it's going to make them uncomfortable me being uncomfortable is me healing you know it's not to be oh that person you know it, it's your truth is going to come out eventually anyway. I don't have to do that. You know, anything that's being exposed, it's going to, anything that's done in light, in the dark, is going to come to light. Anything that's good is going to have a retract for that. And something's going to come back to you and it's going to emphasize on all the good you put out. Anything you put out bad is going to emphasize and it's going to come right back. You know, um, everything has a cause and effect to it. Everything has a lot of karma to do to it. And just for me to be able to do this in a helpful way, in a healthy way, in a positive way, you know, it's always going to have something that's going to place disappointment and anger towards people. And it is what it is. You know, if it affects you, obviously, there's some truth to that fiction that you, you know, that you want to keep living. You know, and that, you know, I, I still wish love towards anybody. You know, whether whether or not it's reciprocated, I still wish love towards people and it's blessings. So, but like I said, I'll leave uh, all my information in the description box below. 
Um, anything that, I, you know, if you come to me and say, Rosalind, I'm going through this, I want to be able to help people the best way I can. You know, um, to be able to give them that light, you know, from experience for what I've gone through, or at least from what universe wants me to discuss with that person. You know, I'm trying my best to be able to help out, you know, with that. So, um, and whatever we speak on is confidential. You don't have to worry about that. Be discreet. And I help out the best way I can. I would never uh, make somebody wish that they didn't tell me anything. You know, because I know it takes a lot of courage to open up to tell somebody, especially a person you don't know that way, just to be able to do that. Shoot, even sometimes it is with people you do know. I never want people to ever do that. I've been that route where, you know, things that I've opened up, you know, because I really felt I needed to talk to somebody was used against me later on. So um, I never want I know what that felt like. So I never want that to be coming for me, you know, so I help out the best way I possibly can. You know, um, to be able to give you that deeper understanding, hoping and praying that will send you towards that level of utopia, towards peace that you truly need. So I try to be able to help out the best way I can. So, um, you know, um, and also I leave my cash app down there. So if you ever feel generous enough to drop a donation, please, it's greatly appreciated as well. Um, whatever you're doing to bring peace and love and prosperity and abundance to your life. Uh, I place so much beautiful things on your life, um, especially if you've gone through it and you really feel like you have not seen the fruits of your labor. You have not been able to bless that enjoy enjoyment of everything you've been placing into your life for a change. Uh, know that it's, it's, it's not going to end the way you've been experienced and it's going to have you're going to reap benefits of all that hard work you're putting in. You know, anytime it may feel like, you know, things aren't turned around for you, you just don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Because universe, when they see you putting in that work, they're paying attention to that. They see that you're becoming serious to get on that alignment for what they already have for you. You never know. You never know. Just because you prepared for one thing and they see how you went out and they see how things was very hard for you in every form, they use, usually that they're going to give you more than you expected. So you keep going. You stay consistent and you be persistent. You know, the enemy wants you to give up. You know, when it becomes hard, you get close to it, it, it really going to hit the fan. So it's just showing you to keep being keep being resilient, keep being strong, keep being that beast. Be that goddess, that warrior goddess and goddess that you've always been, um, that you need to be acknowledgement of. Um, because creation of unimaginable blessings is coming your way. So, you know, use when you on that fate of giving up today, it could be your win tomorrow. So, you know, don't don't allow the enemy to let you be discouraged like that. Don't allow your hard work to feel like it's, it's in vain because it's not. So um, I'm sending that love and blessings towards your. I'm claiming that for you, regardless of what you're being discouraged about. I'm claiming that for you. So beautiful things is coming your way and it can be sooner than you ever expected. So keep moving. Keep enjoying life. Keep allowing yourself to be excited, even when it's frustrated. Be excited of what is unfolding and how it's changing you for the better. So, much love to you. Peace.